Welcome back to machine learning. The video today will cover clustering. We've talked about supervised learning so far in decision trees and k-nearest neighbors. And with a supervised learning algorithm, you have access to both the data and the labels. And usually the data is represented by this capital X and the labels are represented by this capital Y. So you have access to both and you're able to learn a model that predicts labels based on the training data, which is labeled. In unsupervised learning, we have sort of a different setup. We have really only access to the data. Now this may mean that, you know, we don't have labels or we just don't have access to them for whatever reason, nobody gave them to us. K-means is a common clustering algorithm and the one that you're gonna learn about in this class. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to separate the data into K clusters, and we're gonna describe each cluster by its mean. It's an iterative algorithm. It's very simple and it works really well. And it's used for a lot of things even today. K-means is so named because the result of K-means is K-means, so you will get k cluster means as the result of running the k means algorithm these are the steps for the algorithm it's quite simple we're going to initialize the cluster centers randomly we're going to compute the distance from each point to each cluster center and then we're going to assign each point to a cluster using minimum distance now that we have clusters we're going to recompute our cluster centers and then we'll just repeat steps two through four until we converge. We, the programmer, set K, so it is a hyperparameter. The cluster centers are represented by this mu, okay? We initialize them randomly. What we usually do is choose K points out of the training data and set those to be the cluster centers. Now we compute the distance from each point to each cluster center, and we're gonna use Euclidean distance, which is also known as the L2 norm, and it looks like this. So for every point in the training data, we're going to compare it to every cluster center. Now we're going to assign each point to a cluster using a minimum distance, and we're gonna recompute our cluster centers. So after step three, we are going to have K clusters, and we are going to use those clusters to recompute the mean. And then we're just gonna repeat these steps. Here it is a little bit more formally. Here we can see that we have um, K cluster centers as the output. We initialize the cluster centers randomly. And while we have not converged, we look at every training sample and we compute the distance for every training sample to every cluster center, that's what this is. And DI is just some temporary variable that's holding distances for us. And then we say, okay, well, now I know the distance from XN to all cluster centers, and I wanna figure out which cluster center is the closest. So I'm looking for the index where D is minimized. Then we're gonna just add this point to this cluster and we start with empty clusters. This for loop is just going to recalculate the cluster centers. So it's going to calculate the mean of each cluster and assign it to the cluster center. Let's run through an example to get the hang of it. Here we have some one dimensional data. Okay, we have the point negative three, negative two, zero, one, and three. I'm gonna choose k equals two, and I'm randomly going to assign mu one to one and mu two to three. If we start this way, let's go through iteration one. We're gonna go from left to right and look at each of these points and just say, okay, is it closer to mu one or is it closer to mu two? So negative three is closer to mu one, and so cluster center, cluster one now has the value negative three in it. Negative two is also closer to mu one than it is to mu two. So we're gonna add two to cluster one. Zero is closer to mu one than it is to mu two. So we're gonna add zero to cluster one. 
and 1 is also closer to mu1 than it is to mu2, so cluster 1 now has 4 points in it. And the final point 3 is actually closer to mu2 than it is to mu1, and so cluster 2 has the point 3 in it. So we've completed the portion where we construct the clusters based on distance, and now we need to recompute cluster centers. So what we do is we take the mean of the cluster, and all we do to do that is just add all the points together and divide by the sum of points. So we add all the points together, divide by the number of points, which is four, and then we get negative one. And for the second cluster, there's only one point, three, divided by one is three. Okay, so we, now we have updated cluster centers and we can move on to iteration two. Again, we're gonna go from left to right. So if we have negative three again, it's closer to mu one, than it is to mu2, so cluster 1 has 3 in it. Negative 2 is closer to mu1 than it is to mu2, so now cluster 1 has negative 3 and negative 2. 0 is also closer to mu1, so our cluster 1 has 3 points in it. And the point 1, so this is where it differs from the last iteration, the point 1 is actually equidistant to mu2 and to mu1, because this is where mu1 is. So we get to just randomly choose which cluster it should go to, and we choose cluster 1. And the point three is closer to mu two than it is to mu one, and so cluster two has the point three in it. Now we recompute the cluster centers, and we see that we get the exact same cluster center for one and for two. And because we got the exact same cluster centers two iterations in a row, we have converged, okay? So we're done. Let's do a 2D example, okay? Here we have six points. We have a point here, 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 and here. Let's choose k equals two and let's start with cluster center mu1 as this point and mu2 as this point. Our first iteration, we're gonna start with the point negative three, one, which is this one right here. We're gonna calculate the distance between this point and mu one and this point and mu two. And we do that using Euclidean distance and we get these two distances. And then we choose the minimum distance, which happens to be mu one. And we add the point to cluster one. Now we move on to the next point, which is this one. We do the same thing calculate the distance to mu1, calculate the distance to mu2, and we see that this point belongs in cluster one. So we add it to cluster one. We do the same thing with this point, and we see that it actually belongs to cluster one as well. So we add it to cluster one. Now we move over here and we see that this point is closer to mu1 than it is to mu2, because it is mu1. And now, we add it to cluster one, and this is what cluster one has in it, okay? And now we move on to the next point, and we see from the plot that this point is closer to, is equally close to this and to this. So it's equally close to mu one and to mu two, and so we randomly choose where it should go, and we choose cluster two, okay? And we don't even have to calculate the distance for this because this is mu two, so it's closer to mu two than it is to mu one. So cluster two now has two points in it. Now we need to recalculate our cluster centers. So we do that by computing the mean. So we just sum the points in the cluster up and divide by the number of points in the cluster. And these are our new cluster centers. I've plotted them here so you can see them a little bit more clearly. This is cluster center one and cluster center two. Now I'm just going to visually see where points belong. Okay, so I can see that Negative three, one is closer to mu one than it is to mu two by far. Negative two, negative two is closer to mu one than it is mu two. Negative one, negative one is also closer to mu one than it is to mu two. And then if we move over here to these points, we see that one, two is much closer to mu two than it is to mu one. Similarly with two, three and three, two. And so cluster one looks like this and cluster two looks like this. Now, again, we have to recompute the cluster centers. Adding these points, we now only have three points in cluster one, 
not four, and we have three points in cluster two, not two points. And these are our new cluster centers. I've updated them on the plot, and then we run through iteration three. So we can run through the algorithm again, but we can also realize the clusters will not change. And so we're good to go. So the points that are closest to mu one are the same points that they were in the last iteration, and the points that are closest to mu two are the same as they were in the last iteration. So when we take the average of those points, we will get the exact same cluster centers that we have now. And that means that we've converged, and so we're done. K-means is great because it's guaranteed to converge. So no matter what, no matter what K you choose, no matter what initial condition you give it, it will converge no matter what. And it's a very popular unsupervised learning algorithm. That's it for clustering. The next topic for this class is going to be the perceptron.